1800 hours Pakistan Standard Time. Assalamu alaikum. This is Radio Pakistan. The news read by Daman Zaman. The headlines. The Foreign Minister says an emergency session of the OIC Executive Committee at Foreign Minister's level has been convened on Sunday to evolve a joint strategy regarding the situation in Palestine. The Special Representative on Religious Harmony says the Prime Minister has effectively highlighted the Palestine issue at all international fora. China has accused the United States of ignoring the sufferings of Muslims after Washington blocked a scheduled United Nations Security Council meeting to address the situation in Palestine. The Information Minister says the Federal Cabinet has approved 180 days special tax incentives on oxygen cylinders and all other associated products to wake in the wake of the prevailing COVID-19 situation. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian troops continued violent cordon and search operations in Shupai and Pulwama districts on the second consecutive day today, causing immense inconvenience to the local residents. In Afghanistan, 12 people were martyred in an explosion inside a mosque during Juma prayers in Shakardara district today. And uh, the news in detail. The Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi says an emergency session of the Executive Committee of Foreign Ministers level of the OIC has been convened on Sunday to evolve a joint strategy regarding the situation in Palestine. In a telephonic conversation with the Amir Jamaat Islami Sirajul Haq, he said that he will attend the emergency session through video link and apprise the participants about the concerns and anxieties of the people of Pakistan over the Palestine situation. The Foreign Minister apprised the Jamaat Islami chief about Pakistan's diplomatic efforts made so far over the issue of Palestine. He said Al-Aqsa Mosque is one of the most sacred places of Muslims and its protection is part of our faith. Shah Mahmood Qureshi said the entire Muslim Ummah has serious concerns over the way Palestinian Muslims were attacked when they were praying at the al Aska Mosque during the month of Ramadan. But the leaders also strongly condemned the Israeli aggression against the innocent Palestinians. The Special Representative to the Prime Minister on Religious Harmony, Maulana Tahir Ashrafi, has said Prime Minister Imran Khan has effectively highlighted the Palestine issue at the International Fora. Talking to newsmen in Lahore today, he said the platform of Organization of Islamic Cooperation should be utilized to resolve all the issues being faced by the Muslim Ummah. Maulana Tahir Ashrafi stressed the need for concerted efforts by the Muslim countries to resolve the Palestine issue. He said the United Nations and the international institutions should raise their voice against the atrocities being committed by Israel against the innocent Palestinians. China has accused the United States of ignoring the sufferings of Muslims after Washington blocked a scheduled United Nations Security Council meeting aimed at addressing an intensifying conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. Talking to reporters in Beijing, the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Hua Chanying said the United States single-handedly obstructed the Security Council from speaking out on the crisis while standing on the opposite side of the international community. She said the United States should realize that the lives of Palestinian Muslims are equally precious. The United Nations Security Council will hold an open meeting on Sunday to discuss the escalating tensions between Israel and Palestine. Chinese permanent representative to the United Nations, Yang Chan, in a tweet, said China is deeply concerned about the escalation of tension in the occupied Palestinian territory. He said the United Nations Security Council should act now and send a strong message. The Chinese representative also regretted the blockade of today's scheduled meeting of the Security Council on the issue by a member. Meanwhile, the Norwegian mission to the United Nations in a tweet said Sunday's meeting has been proposed by Norway, Tunisia and China. 
The Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has urged the United Nations Security Council to seek a peaceful resolution to the Palestine issue. During an online briefing today, he said Israel is a terrorist state and to stand against its aggression in Palestine is a duty of honor for humanity. Rajiv Tayyip Erdogan said Turkey will not remain silent on Israeli persecution in Palestine even if the entire world ignores it. He said it is imperative for the United Nations Security Council to take steps to ensure peace in Jerusalem. Israel ignoring international calls for calm continues its aggression on Gaza with airstrikes and artillery shells stepping up the deployment of troops and tanks near the besieged Palestinian enclave. Israel fired artillery and mounted extensive airstrikes. The latest death toll has risen to 119, including 31 children, and at least 800 people have been wounded. Hundreds of Palestinian families have taken shelter in the United Nations-run schools in northern Gaza to escape the Israeli artillery fire. Hamas fired another barrage of rockets towards Israel, hitting the city of Ashkelon, an Egyptian delegation that met with the Israeli officials to mediate negotiation of a ceasefire did not reach any positive results because Israel refused all initiatives of mediation. There have also been more violent confrontations between Jewish Israelis and Palestinian citizens of Israel in several cities inside Israel. Meanwhile, in Germany, a protest rally was held outside, uh, outside synagogues where demonstrators shouted slogans against Israel and burned its flags. This is Radio Pakistan. The Information Minister, Chaudhry Fawad Hussain, says the federal cabinet has approved 180-day special tax incentives on oxygen cylinders and all other associated products to meet the needs of COVID-19 patients. In a tweet today, he said this decision has been taken, keeping in view the need for oxygen in the wake of COVID-19 situation in the country and will be implemented immediately. He said Pakistan has doubled oxygen production during the last one year. The Minister for Information and Broadcasting, Chaudhry Fawad Hussain, has said the nation is proud of its armed forces, paying tributes to the services of the troops in a tweet today. He said they stay awake at night so that the people could sleep. Chaudhry Fawad Hussain said Chief of the Army Staff General Kamar Javid Bajwa spent Eid with troops on the line of control. The rest of the army leadership was also present with the troops. He said from soldiers to generals in the army, they are like a close-knit family. In the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, the Indian troops continued violent cordon and search operations in Chupaiya and Pulwama districts on the second consecutive day today, causing immense inconvenience to the local residents. The residents of these areas informed the media that military operations have made their life miserable. They said the Indian soldiers harassed the inmates and misbehaved with women folk during the operations. Meanwhile, the occupation authorities imposed strict restrictions in Batmalu area of Sirinagar to prevent the people from holding demonstrations against the killing of a youth, Ubaid Ahmed, by Indian troops. On the other hand, despite restrictions, people held a forceful anti-India and anti-Israel demonstration in Patshahi Bagh area of Sirinagar. The protesters burned Israeli flag and raised anti-India, anti-Israel and pro-Pakistan slogans. Anti-Israel demonstrations were also held in Badgam, Pulwama and other areas of the occupied territory. At least 12 people were ma rather yes at least 12 people were martyred and 15 others wounded in an explosion inside a mosque in Shakardara district north of Kabul today according to the local police the blast took place in Kalai Murad big area during Juma prayers the American embassy in Russia says it will temporarily resume counselor services for its citizens after Moscow postponed a ban on it hiring foreign citizens ahead of a possible meeting between Vladimir Putin and Joe Biden. The temporary reversal came after Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and American Secretary of State Antony Blinken held telephonic talks this week and agreed to meet on the sidelines of an Arctic Council meeting in Reykjavik on Wednesday. 
India records over 4,000 COVID-19 deaths for the third straight day today, according to the Indian Health Ministry, over 343,000 fresh cases of COVID-19 have taken the overall tally of cases to 240.5 million, with active cases now 3.7 million. A total of 343,144 new cases of COVID-19 have been registered in a day. And finally, the weather. Partly cloudy weather with chances of rain coupled with wind and thunderstorm is expected in upper parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, chances of rain, wind, thunderstorm and few hailstorm is expected in Kashmir, Khabar, Pakhtunkhwa, Upper and Central Punjab and Gilgit, Baltistan. Hot and dry weather is expected elsewhere in the country. And that is the end of this news bulletin. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and you can also watch the live video streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com forward slash radio pakistan news official